Hey there, my Instagram lovelies. Hello there, my Insta girlfriends, too. It's so good to be here with you. I'm Donna Hoffman. They call me the interior design advocate because I wipe out the ugly room. I empower women just like you to stop the disappointing decorating result and to turn things around. Now, certainly, every Tuesday, we come out here, 4 p.m. Eastern, and I teach about design, and I take your questions on something in design. And we're in a really weird moment right now. Weird is a euphemism for lousy, crappy, crazy, this whole COVID thing. So every week I've been asking you first, how are you? And do you still want to talk about design? And everybody has been showing up saying, yes, we still want to talk about design. So I want to know how you're doing inside first. So just let me know that you're okay. You can either give me a wave, send me a smile. I want to make sure that you're riding this COVID crazy news cycle thing relatively well, hopefully really well. First and foremost, I hope you're healthy. Hope your family and friends are healthy and safe as well. And um, I hope your effect, you're, you're, you're being affected by this is minimal. I hope there's no gap in employment for you. I hope I hope you're feeling strong and steady uh, in the face of the challenges that are happening out there right now. And we've been sharing some different things that I've been doing to help stay kind of uh, intact. And a great, great thing I'll share with you now before we hop into design is um, it's along the journaling line. Take a fact that's bothering you. Maybe it's the whole COVID cycle and write down every lousy thought you have about it. Just write them down and number them. And then once you get all the negative thoughts out of you, there'll be many, then go back and start writing out whatever it is you're grateful for or what is working right now and whatever it is that you can feel good in. And then you're going to go back and review that list and put an X next to every thought that doesn't serve you, only makes you feel worse, and a check mark next to every thought like, um, I don't know, I'm always filled with uh, gratitude and grace when I am with my family or whatever. Whatever thoughts you can think of that are positive and, and keep you feeling good and in flow, put a check mark next to those and then highlight them. And then every morning when you get out of bed and every night at night, either or, both or one or the other, just read through the list of those, that positive input and see if that can help you a little bit just to try to stay lifted in the face of, you know, the gloom and doom um, uh, headlines. And hopefully things are going to continue to move um, in the right direction as they seem to be in, in places as well. All right, so that's my, my, little, my little spiel for you there. And again, I ask you if you still want to talk about design and I'm getting waves and hellos and people are ready to go in and start talking about design. So let's do it. Let's talk about design. This week's topic is a goodie, it's a meaty, and it's a, actually a question that I'm going to ask you first and then I'm going to teach about it. And the question is, what is the most, the single most necessary ingredient in great design? Just input it for me. What do you think is the most important ingredient in great design? I mean, rooms that you look at uh, in pictures and you think, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Or you go to someone's home and think, oh, I could live here. This is so beautiful. Or rooms on Pinterest or whatever. What do you think is the single most important ingredient in great design? We'll see if there's agreement and then I'm going to teach about this a little bit. So Jennifer is saying design strategy. Desent Jennifer is getting a gold star for me on Instagram. Um, Nana Rooney is saying balance. Okay, good. Um, let's see. Mary is saying strategy. Janet is saying taste. It's a tie between taste and money. <laughs> good tie. Gabrielle is saying strategy. Jane is saying the design plan. Um, Let's see. My, I can't. I can't read um, details. A Angel is saying the details. Margaret is saying um, for me it's function. Um, color combinations is what Ngozi is saying. Balance is what Valerie is saying. Color is what Tina is saying. So we're if you're just ask, ask if you're just entering this conversation, what do you feel is the single most important? important ingredient in great design. Um, strategy and look and feel. Okay, so Vara is giving me like a bunch of answers. Okay, ask for the single one, the single most, but I'll take it. Um, okay, color balance, design strategy, accent walls, taste it. Wow, somebody thinks a single most important element is accent walls. Dulcie is really into her accent walls. Okay, 
client trust from a designer oh, definitely blending is another okay another answer these are great answers okay all right so you want to know my opinion because you know I asked you a trick question because I love you right so I'm going to say that the single most important ingredient in great design, all of the design you love on any designer's portfolio, on Pinterest, on Howes, uh, on the, in the design magazines, on my portfolio, the single most important ingredient, more important than budget, more important than color, more important than any, it's the umbrella answer, it's confidence. Yes, it is because clients hire designers because they don't have confidence in, in what to do next. And many, many talented women, maybe you're one of them, never became a professional designer because you didn't have the confidence. But what drives the confidence? If the single most important ingredient is confidence, what drives confidence? What supports confidence? What creates confidence? Because you can't just whip it up out of thin air, right? It has to be rooted in something, grounded in something. What is that? Well, design strategy, path, design strategy and path. Design strategy and path is what will give you confidence. Design strategy is the formula to what you're doing, when you're doing it, and why you're doing it. And that strategy is what sets up your path. Do you know that design has been so dumbed down, and you've heard me talk about this, people think that I literally have had women ask me, you know, if, it, if their home can be, if a room can be redone, like they show on TV, if it can be done in under two weeks, if, if a, a room start to finish can be un, redone in two weeks, you know, it's that 30 minute episode kind of mentality, right? Design has been so dumbed down into a 300 word blog post. Do you know that before I came out here with you, I tried to put on a little energy, uh, a little more makeup on my face. I spent two hours and 23 minutes on the phone with a great great couple, two hours and 23 minutes reviewing seven rooms for furniture space plans. There was no color in there. There was no balance. There were all these great answers. There was no uh, fabric planning. There was no taste involved. It was strategy. What needs to go into these rooms? What fits? What doesn't fit? Hey, if we turn the staircase, will, will, will it shrink the great room too much so we can't get the kind of seating in there that we want? Strategy. Why did I feel confident saying to my clients, yes, this will work. No, that won't work. Yes, this can work. No, that won't look well. Yes, this is not balanced. Because of, I was confident knowing that I was leaning into design strategy. Design strategy is what gives designers their know-how, and therefore their confidence. Not one of those Pinterest rooms that you love was created with knocking knees, not one. Not one of those house rooms that you love was created with a humana, 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 is this going to work, you know, nail-biting moment. Not one. Every single one, those designers move from a point of confidence because the wind beneath their wings was strategy and path, the order in which you do things. Design has so many decisions involved in it. Dozens and dozens and dozens upon dozens of decisions. You go out and you buy a t-shirt. What do you have, two decisions? Is it, does it, is it pulling in my bust? Does it, does it fit me under the arm? Is it showing my bra strap if it's strapless? I got three decisions. That's it, you bought the t-shirt. You want to put together a whole outfit? A mm, few more decisions to make. But how much money is at stake when you're making these decisions? Not that much. You want to furnish a room? You want to furnish your new home? I, somebody just wrote to me saying, oh my gosh, Don, I just bought a new home. I'm so intimidated about what to do with my window treatments. Good, you should be. Because if you're not using design strategy, get out the paper shredder and run your money through the paper shredder. So many decisions that go into one room, one element of a room, a bookcase that you want built in a room. So many decisions that go into that one area. So knowing what decisions to, do, to make, what order in which to make them, and then how to make them, right? Strategy is not just the what, but the how, the when, the why, the where. It's all of it. So my lovelies, if you are operating on a wing and a prayer in designing your home, you are setting yourself up for failure, setting yourself up for disappointing results, setting yourself up for uh, for more suffering 
on your on your uh, on your interior design in your home and if you're a sensitive and you are most likely if you are attracted to design if you're attracted to my teaching you're probably either an HSP a highly sensitive person or an empath one of those so if you are that and you know that the way you feed and fill your spirit every day keeps you lifted or feeling wiped out keeps you feeling energized or feel keeps you feeling Ugh, nails on a chalk, chalkboard bad, then you should be paying particular attention to what your environment looks like and loading the, stacking the deck in your favor. Why not do that? How do you get the confidence to make those changes in your home? You gotta get your hands on strategy. I don't care what your budget is. You use strategy, you get gorgeous results. If you looked at my Instagram stories recently, you saw a new, apart, a, a, a new uh, professional apartment I did for young professionals. Furniture was coming out of Wayfair. We're talking cocktail tables for $150. This was low budget design. It's beautiful, not because of the budget, but because of the strategies that I use, the formulas. You can lean into them. They tick along. They're reliable. They're always there for you. So if you don't have strategy under your belt and you're spending more than $50 for that t-shirt, $50 won't do very much for you in your own home. If you're spending money on your home, do yourself a favor, get a hold of strategy. I don't personally believe that you can really learn to do design by reading about it in a book, on a blog, uh, or watching it on TV. You certainly can't learn how to do it by watching, by looking at pictures. That, that's ludicrous. That's like saying I can look at a picture of a ballet dancer or a salsa dancer and know how to do salsa. Design is a give and take. It's an active kind of thing. So get a teacher, get a coach that can help you. If I'm that coach, great. Go to my Learn With Me tab on my website. And if I'm not, find another teacher. But find a teacher who can give you strategy because knocking around with guesswork is a recipe for disappointing results. So from my money, what is the one thing you absolutely need for a successful end result? That, and what is the thing that, ha that all great rooms have in common? true deep and unshakable confidence of the woman or man who designed it and what makes that confidence happen strategy and path so with that said and done if you have a project question i made and i gave you a nice general little pep talk lesson here today so that i can take a general flow of project questions i'm happy to take your questions as long as i don't have to see a picture to be able to answer you well i'll be happy to take your question also, while you're putting in those questions, I'll let you know what we're talking about next week, 4 p.m. Eastern, for our Facebook Live. This is a goodie. It's next week we're talking about your floor covering questions, the key floor covering questions. Things like, you know, I, here, here are some of the common questions I get. You know, what direction do I have to run my wood floor in? Can you put an area rug over wall-to-wall -wall carpeting? What are the best materials for area rugs? What are some pet-friendly area rugs? And on and on. So we're going to take your flooring questions next week, and I'll do a little lesson on flooring. So put my glasses back on. If there are questions that you have about uh, your design project, or if you just want to give me a comment on something that I've said or taught, I'll take that too. So, and by the way, all the answers you guys gave me about what's important in design, they were all good answers. They were all, you all get a gold star from me for sure. Um, um, Bryna wants to know, what do you do with a 20 foot wall? Climb it? I don't know. Uh, more detail on that question. What do you do with a 20 foot wall? I need, I need a more specific question there, Bryna. Um, Steve just said you, advertising, you could, you could erect a billboard up there. Um, probably if there isn't furniture on there, you need some sort of great artwork breaking it up. I'm guessing, Bryna, that you maybe have a, an open concept plan with this 20 foot wall, but I need more information from you on that one. Um, dun, 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 dun. So more answers. People are telling me that the feel and the atmosphere is so important in design. Personal touch from Tiffany. I agree, Tiffany. Those layered, nuanced personal touches are important in design. Everybody who's saying strategy, you're all my, my, my design divas. You've heard me say it before, so you're getting an extra gold star and a kiss on the forehead from me. Um, Brian is saying getting to know clients. Yes, that is so true if you are working with clients. The most important thing that a designer has to do early on and throughout a project is to garner your client's trust and confidence. And you are constantly working to, to protect that, their confidence, right? There's that word again, confidence. 
Um, Mary's saying that she loves this. Mary, I love you. I'm so glad you're here with me. Jamie's saying hi to Katie. Katie's not here in the office with me. We're on stay in place, a shelter in place. Steve is over here playing the part of Katie. And Katie just found out she can't go home for Easter because they're doing all kinds of interstate um, restriction on driving. Cannot wait till this whole thing is over. It's a weird, scary moment. Um, Mary's saying she's an HSP and an empath. Mary, girl after my own heart. Um, I'm getting hellos from Santa Fe. Hello from San Antonio. Okay. Mary's curious about my Enneagram type. I don't even know. Totally crazy, whack job, nut job. I don't even know what an Enneagram type is. Uh, here's a question from Jennifer, who also gave us a great, great uh, answer before talking about strategy. Is Design P CPR still, um, does it still have a discount coupon? Yes, it does. Get thee to my website because you will see on the blog there is a 20% off coupon on Design CPR. And I'll tell you what, you want to, if you're a dessert first girl, you want to quickly redo something, Design CPR is it. You will have results because it's so heavily accessory driven to really change up a room. You can have results in hours working with what you already own. Um, so there you go, Jennifer. Yes is, your, yes is your answer. And hug and kiss if I get to see you in the private Facebook group that goes with that. Um, Mary's saying, what is the best strategy for well-done minimalism? Okay, great question. Mary, with minimalism, the less you have in a space and the less color there is in a space, the more form and or shape, really form is, when I say form, I mean shape, the more shape moves forward. So, you know, in traditional design, when there's a lot happening, let's take a, let's take a living room. So you've got quite a bit of, of, of predictable furniture, right, in, in uh, traditional design in a living room, a lot of accessory, art, and so lamps, so forth. With minimalism, you are looking to, it's like a reductionist view. You're looking to do as little as possible while making a statement with what you do. That means that the furniture shape really becomes very important. You may have a slightly under-furnished looking space, or it might be a fully furnished space, but very little in the way of adornment. So the shape of a light fixture becomes all the more important because there's not a lot of fluff and puff around it. So Mary, just like I teach in um, my design CP, uh, my decorating genius course, which I know you're in, there is the same path to the order in which you do every single step. But with minimalism, you're constantly asking yourself, mm, am I over designing? Do I need that table here? Do I need that chair? Do I need that accessory? Do I need that? You are trying to let the form and the shapes of all of those, the, the shapes and the form, collected form of all of those shapes, they're making a statement. They're saying something in that space. Somebody who I think is excellent at doing this when he does minimalism, I think Jamie Drake's uh, team is outstanding with, um, with minimalism. Really exciting looking um, and really well balanced. And I would... I would, I would, again, I would just ask yourself, Mary, am I doing too much here? Am I over designing? And definitely with minimalism, you want to keep your adornment and extra detailing to an, to an absolute minimum as well. Um, if, if you have a more specific question, Mary, feel free to pop that in. Brenda's saying, what is the best color for kitchen cabinets? What is your design fingerprint? Do you love all the white or are you looking at all the white thinking, oh, give me a break from all the white? Uh, so it really depends upon, um, you know, when are you selling your home? Do you, uh, are, you, what's, what, are you trying to, to be on trend uh, for, the, for the short term? Um, and are you trying to expand your space? Brenda, if you want to expand your space, lighter cabinets will expand the space. Uh, if you're a gray lover, I will tell you that people are still asking for those gray cabinets, but not as much and in the same way as they had been. Um, and we are starting to see stained cabinetry coming in as a mix more and more, a mix of stained with painted. Um, so, uh, I would want to know, are you asking because of resale or are you asking because of who you are in design? And Brenda, you can't be asking me because of, you don't know who you are in design because I want you to know who you are in design. I want you to know your design fingerprint. What do you love in kitchen cabinetry and what makes you just come alighted with your backsplash or with your hardware? Start to notice like a detective more about who you are in kitchen design. Hopefully that helps you. Shana's saying hello. Hello back to you, Shana. Nancy loves my glasses. 
Uh, Costco, three pair for 20 bucks or so. I do not spend a lot on my readers because I lose them constantly, as Mr. Hoffman here to my left will tell you. Um, can I, can I write her name? What? Steve, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what I don't know. I don't even know what this means. Okay. I don't even know what this means. Okay. I don't even under, I don't understand the question. All right. Um, can I, can I just write her name out or say her name? Jenny? No, the top. Sinara Faria Campos asked, can you write her? See, I don't even know what this means. That's what it says. Okay, well, I don't think that was the question to pass over to me because I don't understand it. All right, we have to have a little sidebar question, a sidebar uh, discussion later after the, after the Facebook Live. Katie, when are you coming back? No, I love my guy. I do. Uh, Helen says, you mentioned during using binders to keep paperwork in check with home office desk area. Any ideas where to place the printer? Yes, in the closet if you're wireless. That's where we have our printer. We call her Big Bertha because she's a big honka mama that we rent because we got to put out so much paper um, and, so, and such fast uh, uh, motion. So we have this big giant thing that's ugly as sin. In the closet it goes. And if not that, Helen, then I would put it into some built-in cabinetry if you have that. Or you could put it into um, some, you know, like a, what's the word, like a console or something. Yeah. Hopefully that helps you there. Um, oh. <laughs> Steve, whatever it is, don't say just, it. Just no, say don't it. say it. Gina is saying, thanks for the wonderful distraction today. <laughs> Give me it. What do you want me to I'm say? Tired. Jennifer, Donna, are you planning more courses in the future? I have about seven answers for you. Yes, if I can clone myself. I, I, look, there are so many things I want to teach you guys, so many things I want to do for you guys, but I would have to clone myself to do it because I also run a luxury interior design company and there is a bootload of stuff that I need to do. Plus, I need to write great blogs That's for you serious. guys and I got to do all other, all other kinds of great stuff to run a business. Oh, Jamie Drake. That's what you want to me to Jamie Drake. Love his work. Jamie, J-A-M-I-E Drake, D-R-A-K-E. -D Sorry, didn't understand that before. That is the great designer whose work I adore. Um, okay, so, um, Gina's saying thanks for the great distraction today. You're welcome, Gina. Tammy's saying, mistake to glaze kitchen cabinets to slightly darken a cream color. Tam, we're not doing a lot of glazes anymore. We're not seeing a lot of them done. The time we'll do a light glaze right now still is if we really want to, in a white, a creamy white cabinet, if we're trying to show a little more warmth and delineation of what's called the hang, like where the hang up is, it's it's where the aging would be. Um, but, but with the simplified doors, there's less and less need for that. You know, that shaker door is everywhere, and I don't think you really need a lot of hang up in there. So I would make it super, super subtle if you're going to do it now. Um, I wouldn't go heavy in on, on a glaze at this point. <clears throat> Jan is saying, in the master bedroom, our dresser is five feet. The mirror is four feet. Uh-oh. 30 inch lamps. Should I do a triangle of accessories at both lamps or accessorize the middle area? Want to see a picture? Can't do pantomime design, Jan. You should know better. Um, I totally respect you for asking the question. It's not just about the triangle. I know everybody gets caught up on the triangle. It's, it's about what materials you're putting together. It's about what's the style of the lamp and what's the material of the lamp and what are you putting next to it and near it and what space are you filling and how much weight are you creating and what kind of movement are you creating in the room because what happens on the dresser of Jan's in, in Jan's master bedroom relates to the rug which relates to the bench in her bedroom which relates to her side tables so it's not just a quickie answer like that and I would want to see a picture too Jan so I would do you a disservice if I rang in more Jamie is saying minimalism is like a graphic design. Look at your layout design and think, what can I take away to simplify? Exactly. Very well said. Shana is saying, thank you from Northern California. Shana, how's the weather out there? Sunshine is finally here on the East Coast, but it has been gloomy and dreary. Just what you need during a COVID stay in place order. Gloomy and dreary. 
Um, Lindsay is saying thank you from um, Alberta, Canada. Yay! This is my first time tuning in. Love this. Lindsay, so glad. So glad to have you. Um, Tammy is saying painting cher cherry colored cabinets. Nervous to go light. Yeah, come over to the come over to the dark side and go light. I think you'll love it. I think it's a really quick, easy, and low cost way to reinvent kitchen cabinetry. As you all know, and I, I laugh about this with clients. Kind of not like ha 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 laugh, but like, oh, can you believe it? People spend gobs of money on their kitchen cabinets. It's unbelievable, right? They're they're costly. And then when your kitchen's all done, people walk in and say, oh, I love your light fixtures over your over your island. They love the jewelry of the room, right? And the cabinetry becomes a backdrop. So I think it's a really good um, good way to reinvent those. Um, Brenda's saying, I love how much is too much. I don't know what that means, so I'm going to keep going. Mary is saying um, she is very spare right now and having difficulty adding anything. However, I need a few finishing touches. Mary, because I know you're in my private group for the Decorating Genius course, girlfriend, post pictures. And the community and my team and I can weigh in and tell you what we think you need or don't need. So there you go. Um, thank yous are coming. You're welcome, my lovelies. Mwah. I'm so glad I'm helping you. Um, Tammy, we have a lot of Tammies on the line here. This is Tammy Favaro saying, I am building a beach house um, out of the country, um, out in the country, supplies are limited. Thoughts on master bath cabinets. Entire bathroom will be marble tile, white and gray. Well, first of all, I want to come visit you at this beach house. It sounds like a great location. Get out the Pinot Grigio. Um, thoughts on master bath cabinets. Um, Tammy, I want a more specific question. My thoughts, you, you need ba master bath cabinets. There's a general thought for a general question. Thoughts? Gosh, you can do anything. I mean, I don't know what your design fingerprint is. You, you could do beautiful pale, a pale, pale blue, you know, sun and sand. Bring that whole thing in. You could t certainly do the typical white cabinet or dirty white cabinet with whatever your marble is. But you could probably get away with some pretty fresh color in there if that's your vibe, if that's your thing. Um, so I would want to see pictures and maybe more or a more specific question. Dina, if that's a pretty spelling of Dina. Um, should I get rid of my beautiful three-piece matching dresser mirror and replace it with a wall-mounted TV? Yes. Currently the TV is on a TV stand. Yeah, I would. Or... You can mount the TV over a long dresser. It doesn't have to be a media cabinet. And if you wanted to do something interesting in the bedroom, you can change out your um, your nightstands if you wanted to make that the accent in the room. So, Kathy is saying, thank you from a town in North Carolina that sounds fabulous, and I've never said it before, Chocowinity, Chocowinity, Chocowinity. Sounds like a happy place. And you're welcome down there. You're totally welcome. Um, Kathy is saying, I have a two-story colonial. Can I use, can I paint different paint colors in the rooms or keep some the same? Just can't seem to make all the rooms the same color. My style is relaxed, traditional. So here's what I do, Kathy. Um, maybe what you want to do is through the foyer into, let's say, the living room and straight back. Maybe you want to have a single color. And then maybe you want to deepen it up a little bit in the dining room off to the right, right? Um, so you can try to have a palette where the colors are not changing so dramatically between spaces until you have a really contained space. But by taking a foyer color and then having it map into at least one adjoining space, you're going to make your foyer feel larger, and it's just going to relax the eye a little bit. And certainly... The, the, the direction in design has been moving away from every room gets its own color. That said, it's your home. If you want every room to have its own color, have at it. But is it what I would do today, you know, uh, as a professional designer? Probably not. I tend to look to kind of stretch a little bit and get those colors to kind of move from room to room a little bit. Um, okay, Steve Hoffman is giving me another question here from Insta. Why is, so Kitty Joy is saying, this is a good question, Kitty Joy. Why is yellow so hard to work with, work with or is it just me? <laughs> no, it's not just you. Um, strategy for creating stunning yellow looks. Um, okay, so yellow, 
Well, yellow can have a more brown undertone, right? So you have to be careful of your undertones with, with yellows. And I find that yellows in small spaces can intensify like in a bath, like a powder room or a bathroom. But really interestingly, Kitty Joy, we, um, we did a, um, a wonderful uh, conference, the Design Diva conference, which was a live hands-on conference. So fun. And I had my Design Divas working with real paints and mixing colors up. And one of the things someone said, oh my gosh, Donna, when you're mixing a color that has yellow in it, it doesn't take a lot of yellow to affect another color when you're mixing, mixing paints. Yellow is pretty intense. So if you're trying to find a really pale yellow, Usually you have to go lighter on a wall than you think because it just intensifies. It's just there's some, something intense about that pigment. So I think yellow can get very hot very fast. And I think also with yellow, I think you want to be careful what you throw around it. I think if you throw a lot of neutral around it, it becomes very beautiful, very soft. A lot of creams, a lot of whites, even pale, pale um, grays can be really pretty with it. When you start to throw dark gray next to it, it gets very loud and intense. And same thing with black next to yellow. Hello, Bumblebee gets you know more intense as well. So um, I, I think I think that as long as you're careful in how much you're how saturated the yellows are that you're working with, and I think if you keep your palette really fresh, I think it's a great color to work with. I think it gets, I think it's also very pretty in an analogous palette, like um, put green next to it, it's very, very pretty. Um, once you start putting blue next to it or red next to it, those, you know, those contrasting moments on a color wheel, when colors live opposite each other on that color wheel, they get so much more intense. So Kitty Joy, I hope that helps you a little bit. Um, so there you go. Let me see if there's another question on uh, Facebook. Linda is saying, brand new kitchen and I'm having a hard time picking an island light. My cabinets are a white shaker. My counters are not in yet. I am looking at quartz. What goes with white cabinets? Help. LOL. Linda, everything. I mean, anything and everything goes with white cabinets. The problem is, is that I can't see what's around it. What are your other light fixtures? What are your other finishes? We talked about this last night. I've got a private group for my more advanced students or my more motivated and my more motivated students in my Decorating Genius course. Once they graduate from that course, they can join this ongoing monthly meetup that we have where we talk. They come out and talk to me. It's a lot of fun. And um, some some students were asking, you know, how do I decide my different light fixture finishes? And I was just showing them great pictorial um, uh, pictures to, 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 to teach the lesson. But it's not just about picking that island light, Linda. It's about what's in the line of sight. What What is that kitchen open to? What do you see from the other rooms when you're looking into that kitchen? What do you see from the kitchen when you're looking into the other rooms? So those are considerations for you as well. Um, and certainly the 80-20 rule, always great. 80% of one finish, 20% of another. And when in doubt, do designers, do we get a little more jiggy than that? We do, but you will never go wrong with that 80-20 rule. Steve Hoffman, you are sending me so many questions. Um, Jennifer is saying, how many accessories are too many? Um, if you feel like you can't breathe and you have to open a window, that's that's there's a signal right there, too many. If they're in the way all the time, that's a signal that there's too many. Um, if your space looks over designed and overdone, there's a signal too many. If your if your accessories look dated, dusty, uh, wilty, too many, and you need some editing. Um, honestly, Jennifer, accessories are not an afterthought. They are a very strategic thought in every room. Not only why is that accessory there, but what is it working with and, and what is it enhancing by being there? And if you can't justify every single accessory in your room, then, it, then one of those, then, then, or whatever accessory you cannot justify for being there, then it doesn't belong there. It should be anchoring something. It should be moving something. It should be saying something. It should be working with something. Um, accessories are not just doodads that just sit on a table and, and take up space. They are very, very dynamic and every single accessory in your home right now, in the room that you're sitting in right now, every single one of those accessories is doing something to the room and doing something to you and your eye. And if you're not controlling it, it's doing it anyway. So when you know the strategies behind accessories, I don't think you can even, you won't have to ever ask again the question, is this too many or too few? You'll just know 
because you'll be so strategically on your game. Hope that hope that helped you, Jennifer. Um, I wasn't trying to be glib. I mean, I, I, that was really a, uh, an honest answer. Um, okay, Brenda is saying I love fur. How much is too much? I have five pieces in my living room. Five. I'm gonna. Um, I want to see it, Brenda. I'm just teasing. Um, I, I'd really want to see it. Um, I think fur is, is more of an accent, uh, so five sounds like a lot of pieces, and, you know, like two fur pillows and maybe a throw, that's three pieces, that, that even could be a lot. Depends upon the room, if you're going, you know, if you're Miss Glammy Glam, uh, you know, um, just trying to think, wait a minute, we did this amazing, amazing family room two years ago, and we had these, like, llama fur um, ottomans. They were so cute, you just wanted to put a leash on them and walk them. They're just cute. It faux llama. No llama was hurt in the making of these ottomans. And then we did have two fur pillows in the room, too, so that was four. I think it depends upon uh, the type of fur. Like, the llama was this long, scraggly thing, and then the other fur was so different. And also, what what style are you working on? Are you doing, like, a lodge look? You know, you might uh, you might be well with all, a lot of fur. So I'd want to see it, Brenda. Um but I, I think at five, you should back away from the fur. I think you sound like you're good. Um, okay, Trisha is saying, my kitchen is white shaker with gray, black, speckled granite counters. Should my tulip table... All right, Trisha, if you have to describe every element in your room, I got to see a picture to be able to help you. So I'm going to say, I love you too much to give you a crappy answer. I would want to see a picture of what you're asking me. So... Um, I don't think I can give you a good answer without seeing what you're asking me. Okay, describing a tulip table, uh, not so busy, gray or not. Um, can, I, can I mix different granite types in the same room? You know, yeah, you can technically, you absolutely can. Um, I'd want to see what you're talking about specifically, Tricia, but you can, yes, you can mix t different stones. Uh, you have to be careful. You want to be careful about marriage and agreement between them. They don't need to be matchy. And you don't want to look like you're trying to match and you had a miss. But um, I would really want to see what you're talking about, Tricia, in pictures to be able to answer you well. Okay, babe? So I hope, I hope you are okay with that answer. Um, so Angel Blue Eyes is saying, being a visual learner and a beginner, are there example room pictures available with style, type, and label? For example, modern, traditional, as a learning guide. We put something like that together for one of our courses, Steve, and I don't remember which one it was. I think it's Design CPR. Yeah, inside of Design CPR, we have a great bonus that, um, and Design CPR is how to create perfect rooms using accessories, but there's a great bonus guidebook that has pictures that show you what, what these different design styles look like and how to use accessories to kind of lean into a particular design style more. Um, so, that, so that's a resource you can use. And I'm sure if you could just Google design styles, various design styles, and pictures would come up for you as well. So you could try that too. Um, I have a TV on the wall above my dresser. Okay, we have statements coming in. Hi from Miami. Hello. Um, okay, more hellos. Um, can you mix countertop colors in the kitchen from Brenda? Yes. Sometimes we'll do perimeter as one countertop and the island is another. So no problem. As long as there's marriage between them, meaning they're happy together in the same room, kind of like Steve and me. Um, but again, not trying to be matchy-matchy. Um, okay, I could feel that eye roll coming from the man, the man I adore over there. Um, what Loretta wants to know, what do I think of mixing multiple wood colors in an informal dining kitchen area? I like it. I have no problem with it. We don't uh, do just one wood color everywhere. Um, okay, last few questions. I'm being told we're running out of time here. Um, Kathy loves my ideas. Kathy, I'm so glad and I'm sorry if I just massacred the name, of, you know, butchered the name of your, um, your city, your town. Sorry about that. Linda saying, thank you, loved my answer, and I want to join my online group. Linda, you, you cannot get into that private group unless you are a graduate of the Decorating Genius course because I don't want to answer basic questions that I know that my students in that online group would already know the answer to. I, I'm interested in, in that group. I'm interested in, in motivated design lovers who want to go further. So if you've not taken the Decorating Genius course, take a look at that. 
Um, and we have a coupon right now on that as well on the blog. Uh, you can find a 20% off on that great course, amazing uh, Facebook community that comes with it. But the online group, that that advanced group is is another um, that is a, a charge that is a monthly charge for that. Or you can just purchase a group of of, of um, meetups. All right, last couple. Um, I'm fairly new at interior design from Daphne. I need a portfolio. What do you suggest, mm, Daphne? Hopefully, you have family members or friends with homes that they'll let you go in and you know work with them on a project and they'll let you photograph it. Um, I think something you can do for now is certainly photographs of your own home. That's what a lot of design designers start doing when they're first starting out. You don't have a client base. Um, and you can also use a program like Canva, Daphne, to put together some beautiful mood boards um, and talk about projects you know, in, in ways, this is what I would do. This would be a nursery. This would be a glam bedroom or whatever your floats your boat. Um, I was interviewing, we're hiring here at our design company for uh, another designer. And interestingly, one candidate came and she showed me pictures of other people's rooms saying, well, I could design something that looks like this and I could design something that looks like that. I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> that's creative. Like give me an A for creativity. I don't think you can quite do that. So Daphne, hopefully those things will help you. And also new designers sometimes will show vignettes of rooms that they've done. If you haven't done the whole, oh, I'm not saying this right. They'll show a vignette in their home. If you don't feel like your whole living room looks great enough to photograph, but you have a beautiful table and an ottoman, you know, underneath it and some beautiful accessories, and you just want to take a beautiful detail shot, there are ways to use your iPhone. I don't, Steve, do you have your phone? Use your phone handy. Watching oh, he's, no, he's watching Instagram. So there are things you can do on your phone to override the um, the automatic I don't know, the light thing? What, what is the, the automatic yeah. iris, the automatic eyeball? If you hold down yeah. your finger on your phone, yeah. one sec, if you hold down, one sec, one sec, if you hold down your finger on your phone um, and I like a sunshine, a little sun pops up and you slide your finger, it will brighten your image. And so you're overriding the, what is that, the aperture, the something aperture, I don't know what aperture. But it automatically lifts and opens and brightens that space. So, Daphne, if you're going to use your iPhone for photography initially, that's a great little trick for you to be able to use. I should put together a little class for you guys on how to how to take good-looking photography on your iPhone. Note to self. All right, Andrea, do all your lamps in one room, i.e., living room, need to match? I have four of the four of the same end tables. Now. Nah. I don't think they all have to match. Maybe you do. Mm, I'd want to see the room, but I don't always do matching lamps in a room. I'm getting a lot of hearts and love on that one. Last one, um, Jen McCann is saying that with the COVID-19 moment, I have been changing and decluttering accessories. I know a lot of people are telling me that they're loving my design CPR class right now because they're, they want to just make some low-cost, immediate changes in their home, enhancements and accessories, lowest hanging fruit out there, right, to be able to do that. So that's really great. All righty. Um, Sharon is asking, how do I become a stager? Um, you want to get training, Sharon. You don't want to do anything in design as a designer or a stager be, by being a dilettante. Um, I think there's some great online courses you can take for staging. Um, there's a gal, I don't remember her name. Ooh. I, th I think if you Google, I think her product is called psychological staging. I don't remember the blogger behind it, but I think her product is really pretty good from what I've heard about it. I have not tried it, but I would try that. And I know a lot of stagers then take our courses as supplements, but I don't teach staging per se, because staging is a deconstructive thing and design is a constructive thing, right? With staging, you're deconstructing a home and turning it back into a house that can be sold to a product, into a property. And with design, you're making this very personalized, beautifully nuanced and layered space. So kind of different, but a lot of stagers take our courses because they feel like it really ups their game a lot. So, all right, lovely. So if you missed any portion of this um, crazy pants time we had, you can go to YouTube and see any of our, any of our videos and that you'll just find us at the Interior Design Advocate on YouTube. And please, if you are not already following us on Instagram, girlfriends, what are you thinking up there in Canada and down in North Carolina and out in California? This is where to find us at decorating.genius for um, 
no, at Decorating Genius, at Decorating Genius for, um, what, for Instagram. Wow, I think I blew my last brain marble out of my head in this long meeting I had with this great client. So I'm so glad I came out here and was able to string even four words together for you lovelies. Love being with you. Um, keep hanging in there. Every day is different with this COVID thing. Um, I hate it. I can't wait for it to be over. Um, I want everybody to be healthy and safe and I just want to see life go back to what it was and I want I want you guys to feel good and healthy too. So glad I was able to be here for you. Um, next week, flooring. If you, want, if you just want to just say, listen, I need a break from the news cycle and I love design, this is where you need to be, 4 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday. Love you girls. Love you design divas. I will see you next week talking flooring. And um, by the way, we put up a link for a great um, blog post that's up right now, how to stop listening to other people in design, right? Don't be swayed by their opinions. Good blog post. All right, lovely. See you next week for flooring. Big hug and a kiss. Take care. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.